everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make what I'm calling a double concertina gatefold card. So this is how it looks when you take out the envelope and I'll talk you through that in a moment. And then basically these sides all pop out. You can see there the concertina fold and it stands up really nicely. It's just got a great profile, I just love it. Also, I love the holographic cardstock. I think it works really good with the angles and just all those different panels. It's got a real like art deco look about it and I just, yeah, really, really pleased with it. If you wanted to put pattern paper on everything, you can, but I just really liked how you see those kind of triangles when you open it, and then you just, yeah, you just get hit with all this cool color and stuff as it catches the light. And then on the back, you've got lots of room there to stamp and write your message. And then the envelope I've made is slightly, it's like a more of a padded style envelope. So it's just got an extra quarter of an inch um, kind of side all the way around there. And I just done that on the envelope punch board, which I'll show you. And I've also just attached one of my wax seals on the back there so I've got it all I just was playing around seeing how they all looked I need to obviously this one will not get filled out yet because I've got nobody to give this one to just yet but when I do go around to um, needing one then I can just you know pop a little glue dot underneath that and it's all stuck down and I've just popped a piece of playing card on the front there but I've used matching papers as well so the whole thing I don't know just makes it look very very pretty so let me show you how to make this okay so that's what I keep all my wax seals in so I've just done a lot of mine so I've got them ready and then I just attach them to the envelope with my like foam sticky pads I did try using the hot glue and if it's too hot it's just going to melt the wax so you do need to be very careful if you're going to use hot glue but otherwise I'd just use a liquid glue and like I said the foam tabs work fine but um yeah I'll pull one of those out near the end of this video so I've already done one half we'll go through all of that and I've done the topper again we'll talk through all of that so the paper I used for that one I showed you is the new first edition bloom and wonder so this is the 12 by 12 and it's really lovely and I use this one here and then they have this kind of cut out sheet here and that's where that it was that section there was where the peacock image was so that's that one and then for today's I've gone back to an oldie one of my well it is possibly yeah the my most favorite ever first edition paper and it's let's celebrate I just absolutely adore this one so that's the one I'm using again you can still get it as well okay so you want two pieces of 10 by 7 okay so I'm going for this nice pink color to just pull in you know um, all the colors from the cake there that I fussy cut and what we do first of all so you can either score both pieces at five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and then one of them you'll just flip around, okay? Or you can score one at five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and one at one, two, three, four, five, okay? So either way, it doesn't matter, but you will need to do that on two pieces. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, before we fold and burnish all of our score lines there, on one, so say this one here, I'm talking you through now, you're gonna come up from the bottom up here and it's three and a half inches. Yeah, okay. Then on this one, you would need to flip it so the those score lines are on the right hand side because this big five by seven section in the middle, they're gonna stick on top of each other. So you want your, all those one inch lines, you want one lot on the left, you want one lot on the right. Then on this one, you're going to mark a pencil mark again three and a half inches up I mean it's halfway yeah okay so you can see there I've just put a little pencil mark at three and a half inches but when you go to cut it you need to make sure that you're doing your angles in the right direction so on the left hand section you're going to cut from the three and a half section up to here and then on the right hand side you're going to cut from the three and a half section up to there okay so i'm just popping it in my trimmer lining up that's that five inch center score line here on the side of the blade and then just bring this one down to that pencil mark like so come up a little bit there and trim that off this one here where you've got your score lines on the left fold it all in half okay and then you're going to do a mountain fold a valley a mountain a valley okay so you have that concertina on one side then on the other piece where you've got everything on the right fold it all over again but this time it will open obviously to the you know out to the right rather to the left but you're going to fold the same way so then you're going to have a valley a mountain a valley and a mountain again just make sure you burnish all of those score lines 
really well. Like so. Okay, so just hold them there so you can see. You want to make sure you're cutting down in the right on the right angle on each piece and make sure you've got one on the left and one on the right. And then it doesn't matter which one you stick over the top, but one of them wants to go over the other and cover that whole five by section. Five by section, five by seven section. So I've just got some of my glue here. And I'm just gonna cover the back and then just sit that whole one over the top like so. I'm gonna remove my school ball because I don't want to get any glue on that. And just make sure it all lines up perfectly. Fold that over. And again, it should all line up nicely. Okay, and just fold it all back in again like so. You can see your card now will stand up nicely. With this piece here, this is going to go right in the middle. Now with my decoration, what I've done is I've made this centre piece so that you can fold in, once that's all stuck down, you can fold in the sides and you'll still see all of that. That's just the way I've done it. There's nothing to say that you can't obviously, you know, um, have it have a bigger image you know it's entirely up to you but this piece here the holographic card stock is a piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters and then the pattern paper is four and a half by six and a half and then this smaller section here is three and one eighth of an inch by four and a half and then the pink piece for me is two and seven eighths of an inch by four and a quarter okay yeah four and a quarter and I've just put some foam pads behind this holographic piece here just so that's got some dimension. And then the fussy cut image, again, I've put on some foam tabs as well because the height of this piece almost starts to level up with the height of this kind of springy concertina fold, which is why it fits nicely in that more padded kind of style envelope. And then this one here, I've put foam on the back as well. So I'm just going to stick that one down in the center. Should have a nice even border. It all folds up, and you've got that nice centerpiece. For the back, this is a piece of four and a half by six and a half. Yeah, so I'm just going to stick this one down while it's here. Okay. Now, if you want, that can be the card done. Okay, it does look lovely. I think you really see the folds. You know, it's it's got a great look about it. But if you do want to add a bit more, like I am, then you're going to need four pieces. For size measure, three and three quarters by six and five eighths of an inch. Okay. Now, what I would suggest you do is work on one side at a time, just so you don't con confuse yourself, because obviously you're working on an angle. And just concentrate on like one side first. Okay. So I'm not going to cut all these at the same time. So I'm going to work with this one first, and I basically I want to cover these well let's just say we're just going to work on the back here first of all okay so it would go from the top here down there you just want to make sure your angle goes the same way as whatever side it is that you're working on sorry i know i'm off screen a bit there okay but just make sure your angle's the same so you want to come down on whatever side you're going to bring your angle down to you want to come down at two and five eighths of an inch and i'm just going to use this here so two and five eighths i'm just going to mark just there. So I'll just put a little marker just here and then with my trimmer I'm going to cut from that top left down to that point on the right hand side like so. So now we know this is going to go in here. Then turn it around so you're along the flat side and you want to trim at every three quarters of an inch. So I can see here it's at three and three quarters so I'm just going to bring it down to the three inch, trim Bring it down to two and a quarter, trim, then down to one and a half, trim, and then down to three quarters. All right, so I'd already worked that all out for you. And then you'll see that this one will fit. The first one, the tallest one, will fit perfectly. The rest now you're going to have to trim a little bit off of the bottom of each one, but the angle will be perfect on all of them. And that's the most important part. So it was just easier to cut the angle rather than do the angle different, you know, cut that separately on each one, because the likelihood of you being able to get the angle perfect on every one, you know, is obviously more challenging to do. But so the first one fits in there perfectly and you'll have that nice border. This next one here, you want to just bring it up so it has the same border. But down here, again, I just find marking mirrored card better with like a poker tool rather than a pencil because you can't rub it out. But I'm just going to mark, you know, 
so it lines up with the other silver or mirrored piece there and that's where I'm going to trim that piece then bring the next size down so your next largest one again line it up so you've got the same border at the top here as you've got there and again just mark them keep them in order just so you know and then this one here and it's just better to do this each side at a time and then you know exactly where you are because if you do all these pieces then it's just gonna um, you know it might confuse yourself although saying that just thinking you will need probably you'll do this one twice because it will be the same as what goes in this section on this side because you do both sides if you want so you see there that one will fit perfectly in there so you can cut two of them and that one where it just you know I've done that little marker it lines up the same so you will do two like that so you could grab your other piece come down two and five eighths on that same side because it's exactly the same piece so two and five eighths I'm just going to push those up there so once you get used to doing it and that then you you know by all means cut them all and just keep them in their own like little piles or something there's that one and then again just twist it around and again bring that one down to three and just you know drop it down by three quarters each time all I can do with this one I know the first one's perfect in terms of its size and then this one I can just bring this one next to it and just use that marker there so just use that as your guide just make sure the bottoms line up so now I know that I've got that piece to cover this back of this side but the inside of that side and then if you flip them that way with your two pieces of this you're going to do the same but this time you're going to come down by two and five eighths on the left hand side so on those two we came down on the right, on this one we're going to come down on the left. And again, pop it in here and just drop it down three quarters each time. We'll do that on the other one, but now you can see the first one always will fit perfectly and then the rest you just want to mark again. Okay, so I'm going to go and get them all done and get them all stuck down. Okay, so there is the card. Now I don't think I'm going to put pattern paper here. I'm going to keep this one just all with just that mirrored cardstock. But if you do want to add a piece just on these two front panels, you may want to do pattern paper on all of them as well. I mean, I may well do that in you know future when I make this card again. But for the minute, I just want to keep it. Um, it's like a disco. So, but if you did want to do these ones here, because I'll bring in this one again. You can see I've just put pattern paper on the front panels. So you will need two pieces that are, they will be half an inch wide by, we're going to look at uh, three and a half, and then you'll just have to do your angle. Okay, but um, yeah, I mean, you can see it's up to you. It does, they, they both look lovely. So I just want to see all this mirrored cardstock. So now we want to make the envelope. So it's really straightforward, really easy to do, but I am using the envelope punch board. So you want a piece, because this is going to be for a five by seven envelope. Just grab it here. So you just want to find five by seven, which is the card size. It's telling me I need a piece of paper that's nine and a half by nine and a half. So I've got this piece here, which isn't actually from the paper pad. I always go for a paper when I make the envelopes rather than a card stock. And I've got this big paper pad, which I've shared before. Um, and I've just found one that matches really well. So it's telling me my first score line is the four inch score line. So here, so I'm just going to take this out. I'll link up a video on how to use this because I always get asked it whenever I bring it in, but I've done a separate tutorial on that. So I'm going to line this up with four inches, punch and score. Don't worry if you can't go all the way down, you'll, it will work out in a moment. But then I'm also going to then move it along to the four and a quarter. Don't punch, just score. Okay, then I like to flip it so this is now at the bottom and work on the opposite side. Again, pop it in at four and score. 
punch and score, and then move it along four and a quarter, but do not punch, although you go to want to do it, just score down that line. Then for the next ones, all you're doing is bringing it along here, so just look at this, this kind of little notch here, until it sits with this score line here, there's a score line. You just want to line it up with that, and then score. And then this time you want to just pull it along, focusing here until this score line that you've just scored comes out by about a quarter of an inch again. Because you can't use it up there. But I have just roughly, you know, can see that that's a quarter of an inch there. If you want to, you know, measure between the score lines with your pencil, but again, yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with that. And then again, flip it to the other side, bring this along until it hits that corner, score. And then I'm just going to bring it out a little bit more to about there and score. Okay, get rid of that excess. Oh, oh, I didn't punch on those sides. You have got a punch there. <laughs> so yeah, when you've lined it up there on those two other sides, you're just doing that one punch. So again, just bring that down. There we go. It's the second one you just don't want to punch on, okay? And then just fold. If I bring it up, you'll see now those score lines. So you see we've got two quarter of an inch apart. It's just by doing that simple, you know, extra score line, it will give you that bolt. But like I say, if you don't want to do that and you'd rather do a box envelope, then just follow that link that I would have put in earlier and you'll be able to um, to make one. So I'm just going to fold and burnish both of those score lines. Okay. And then just using some double-sided tape, I'm going to run. So your sides are going to come in and then this is going to come up. So you just want to run it along as close to that without going over. I've just ripped all that. It's my own fault. In fact, I'm going to bring it in a thinner. What have I got here? There we go. That was thinner. So you just want to line it up with the edge there and this one here. There we go. Take the backing off. And then when you bring up the base, you want to make sure that you bring up the sides like you're constructing a box and just make sure you've got a nice right angle because if you come in too tight so just bring up the sides so they you know like I said it sits at a right angle and it should yeah just tack itself but you can go in side the envelope there and then this one will just automatically kind of line up and then again take the backing off of that one just bring up the sides there like so. And then bring all that down. I always turn it upside down and pop it in envelopes. That way anything that you've got that might catch will slide in nicely. And now you can bring that one over and there's your envelope. Okay, and then I'm just going to pull out one of these and it's the hot pink. I might do Maybe the silver, because it's sitting there, that doesn't look so good there. Hmm, see I like that one. Let's do that one. So, I've got a foam pad here. This is probably too big. Let's just trim this down a little. And I'm just going to pop the foam pad right down into the corner there. Take the backing off. You don't have to use a foam dot. Like I said, you can use a, um, a uh, glue dot. And then I'm just going to stick that on top. So that one says with love on it. And then when I do go to stick it, I've just got to put some, you know, glue underneath there. But once that all squares off again, can you see? It's cute. So there is the envelope. And then I'll just cut a white piece. I, sometimes I put a sticker on there, just like those labels. But um, now we've got a nice envelope and then a gorgeous card, which is just, like I said, it's like a party. It looks really, really cool. And then it's, yeah, stands up perfectly. So that's that one. And then that one. So it will, once it's been in the envelope, that will kind of stay. See, this stays a bit more. This is just quite bouncy still. Plus it's got all that cardstock, so it just needs to settle. But it will kind of be a bit more manageable once you've um, popped it in the envelope for a while. But yeah, there are my double, double or yeah, my concertina gatefold cards. So I hope you like them. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll be back again very soon with another fun tutorial. See you later. Bye.